All fish is a scam, Nicole. Nothing is what you think it is. What are you talking about? The perch is catfish. The escalar is albacore. The calamari are pig buttholes. Your pig butthole. This, this is, is a hot, hot dog, dog is, is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> what? <laughs> Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog's Your Sandwich. I'm your host, Pig Butthole. And I'm Pig Butthole. <laughs> and today, we are dispelling the myth that calamari are not, in fact, squid, but are actually pig anuses. I Nicole, don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. Here's the thing. I think that's a lie. How much profit really is there in the calamari industry? That's what I'm saying. I'm if, sure if, there's tons. Yeah, but if there were, like, calamari-only restaurants, if it was, like, Buffalo Wild Squid out there <laughs> dominating the game, then I'd be like, there would mm. be an impetus to shave profit margins. Mm -hmm. But if you really think the, that, like, the Olive Garden mm -hmm. is skimming profits well, by I'm finding sure a supplier are. of pig intestines? No, they're skimming profits on everything else. Huh, but don't they're know. also just giving away free bowls of pasta after you've already had pasta. I've always wanted to try the never-ending pasta bowl, actually. It is... After two and a half bowls of pasta, you really don't want to really be there. You don't do know not want to be really there. You really don't know my life. I don't know, Nicole. Do you know the Olive Garden doesn't salt their pasta water? Yeah, I was just about to say that. Did you know that? <laughs> did you know that? I was no, about did to say you know? that. <laughs> no, today we are talking about are sushi restaurants scamming you? And before you really get into it. Um, this is so silly. I know. It's silly, but no, there's a lot of really, really interesting stuff to okay. get into here. Mm -hmm. Revolving fish mislabeling and who are actually opening sushi bars and why yeah. in America and the history of it. But is it, but is it fair to say are sushi restaurants scamming you? Or is it just all restaurants that serve fish are scamming you? Okay, that's a great point. Um, I want to preface this by saying... Almost anything you buy is def is some sort of a scam. Okay. Right? No, no, we enter okay. into backtrack, the social contract. Backtrack. We okay. enter into a social contract. Okay. When we that, go to a restaurant? Uh, you want to, yeah, when you go to a restaurant, that uh -huh. you are like paying for things simply because you like them, not because there is an intrinsic value associated with them. Right? Do you know what I mean? There's... Of course there's intrinsic value in food. Like, even if it was pig butthole, if you are enjoying the pig butthole as much as you would squid... Who, like, why is do that you wrong? Think, do you think with the pig... Well, tell people... If you don't eat pig, well, if you're a practicing Jew or Muslim, well, I get it. Well, let me, well, my question is, the pig butthole, do they, like... Because the texture of pig butthole, it takes a long time for it to get soft. No, you got to just baking soda treat it. You think so? I think if you baking soda treat it, and then... One, I've I've gone to some, like, pig intestine specialist, Kulp Chang, like the Korean... Okay. Like, we went to Agassi Kulp Chang. Is that an intestine specialist? Yeah, Kulp Chang means I did not know intestines. That. And okay. when they're done right, they're very delicious, but I've also had some dirty intestines. And uh, you you feel the poop. Uh, you do. There's poop. Oh my god! You, in it. What do you mean you feel? The it's poop? like a gusher. <gasps> I no. I've been to some like some. It was just like a real crappy uh, restaurant that was serving no intestines. No pun intended. If you're am going I right? to eat intestines, go to an intestine specialist. Go to somebody who's been doing it right <laughs> for many many years. Um, no, the the calamari pig butthole thing I believe is a myth. I don't, I don't think that was ever substantiated. There's no way in hell that they're doing that. And if they're doing that, shame on you. If you get calamari, That's just make up. sure that it's the type that they serve with the tentacles because you can't fake that. They're not just fraying the buttholes into tentacles, <gasps> right? You know what they might do <laughs> if they're really scummy? The rings are buttholes. And then in order, if they have like smart diners, they put some tentacles there. <laughs> Maybe. That's like a really scummy thing to do. So it's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm checking, you know. What we are talking about today is the fact that a ton of fish is mislabeled that's in America, true. and also the term sushi grade does not mean anything. Yeah, that's a lie. That was the impetus behind this whole podcast yeah, yeah. is because people were like, that better be sushi grade fish that was eating raw, and sushi and sashimi grade are literally it's not legally protected at all. I think people just slap it on there to sell it, right? A hundred percent. So there's actually this uh, really incredible quote by, he was a fish shop owner uh, in Brooklyn. His mm. name is Yuji Haraguchi, okay. uh, Brooklyn-based Osakana. Um, he just says he used the term sushi and sashimi grade for marketing purposes when he worked as a sales rep for a whole fish <gasps> or for a, a wholesale fish distributor. Okay. Uh, he said back in 2004, the company was trying to expand its customer base beyond Japanese restaurants. And Haraguchi's mm. mission was to convince other restaurants to serve their customers raw fish besides tuna. The term sushi grade fish was very effective in terms of making sales. But at the same time, uh, I had to provide the right product and the right information. He sure, says. So fair. it's one of those things where you go to a sushi bar and you sort of assume that they are using higher quality fish One than question. you would get at home. Go ahead. You say sushi bar, not sushi restaurant. Why is that? Do you not say sushi bar? I say People sushi. at home? I say let's, I, let's go get sushi. 
Well, that, I mean, that bar implies bar stools. Yeah, and, but and every sushi restaurant has a bar inside of it. Can we get a fact check on that? Can we, we get, no, no, we, right, we, well, okay, no, 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 so, okay, so this is a great point, this is a great point. Um, in Japan, in Japan, uh-huh. sushi restaurants are more just a sushi bar. It Fair. is a counter yes. that yes. you go to to eat yes. sushi, and uh-huh. the difference in Japanese and American cultures when it comes to raw fish is really, really going to come into play here. Okay, okay. Right. I just had to interrupt you. Continue your story. So the history of sushi, <laughs> they believe it dates back about a thousand years. And there's an old wow. wives tale that is not substantiated at all, but it mm-hmm. kind of rules. It's like a okay. woman wandered up to an osprey's nest. Osprey, a bird. An osprey, yeah. And okay. like she had a clay pot of rice in an osprey nest or something. And the rice was fermenting. And the osprey dropped fish in there. And she was like, yeah, I'm ate it. And, and and that kind of doesn't make sense, but it's a fun Japanese old wives' tale. Cute. Um, but no, people have been eating like fermented fish and rice as a method of preserving it in clay pots. Yeah. Throughout East Asia for a thousand years. Now this is interesting. Fermented fish. Now people don't normally associate fermented fish with sushi. They sure do not. But that's how it was, right? That's how the OG way was to eat it. Correct. Yeah, yeah. and that's really like, the origins of like the etymology of sushi in mm-hmm. Japan come from, right? Mm-hmm. But if you want to get back to like modern day sushi, a lot of people credit it to the late Edo period. Edo period is like 1600 to like mid 1800s. <laughs> and so uh, in 1830s, they say that the first like modern ish sushi bar, which is old as hell, right? Yeah, it is. There wasn't no hamburgers for another like 80 years <laughs> after that. Like this is pretty damn, uh, you know, old in comparison sure, to a lot of American of course foods. It is. Yeah, yeah. But Edo style sushi, the fish isn't technically like fermented, but it is typically some sort of vinegar cured. Mm, and I've mm-hmm. been to some Edo style omakase restaurants. Omakase means uh, as you as like you pl- it. As you please. As, as the chef please. please. As, as the chef sh- pleases. Whatever the chef says. Or like, it. I'm in your hand. It, the chef's going to make you whatever yeah, the hell yeah. they want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, an omakase meal. And sure. I've been to an Edo style omakase meal cool. and it was fantastic. The fish was just. Cute. This is a cue. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Big date, yeah. Yeah, where I yeah, accidentally went on like a third date and spent a thousand dollars. You spent a thousand dollars on a third any date? Any money. She ordered a $300 bottle of wine and I didn't know how to say no thank you. She was mistaken. And a then she was also yeah, it was, on a third date? It was, listen, it was, it was, we got in a fight too. It was bad. At um, the restaurant? No, after. Okay, after, good, okay, good, like, good, You're good. ignoring me. I was like, I don't know what to tell you. I was talking. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> 1830s modern like nigiri is sort of invented. I'm sure so okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah okay, go ahead, dude. Bro. I had like no money. I was broke too. It's when I, I was living in Glendale remember, with two other dudes. I remember, I remember, yeah, I remember, yeah. Remember, weird okay. times in both of our lives. Um, <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> <laughs> okay. 1830s modern nigiri sushi that we think okay, of, which is yeah. sliced raw fish on rice, sure. could be treated with vinegar. Um, but the rarely, person, I feel like in LA yeah. or like the US. It's not that common. No, true, yeah. true, true. But a lot of times in preparation, the fish can be salted, it can be cured, sure. whatever. But a lot of it is basically like, hey, now we're just taking fish and we're slicing them fresh and we're putting them on rice. Um, which I love. Which you love. Eat I love show, it too. I Again, I have to preface this with like, I don't care if fish is mislabeled. I don't care that Me a vast either. majority of sushi restaurants in America are not owned or operated by a Japanese person. Who, care? Who cares about that? You give me tasty fish on rice and that a part. cold beer, and I'm yeah. having a great time, that and I absolutely part. love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, first sushi restaurant in America, uh, Kawafuku in Little Tokyo, uh, LA. Is it still open? No, it shuttered like like mm-hmm. many decades ago. Uh, but this is 1966. And also... First sushi restaurant in the U.S. was 1966. 1966. Okay. Actually, from a former imperial court chef from Japan, opened it with a business, a Jewish business partner. I love America. I love America. For reasons uh, such as that. Like, honestly. And so, 1966, <laughs> that happens. And all this cultural context really does come into play because during the 80s especially, mm-hmm. 80s and early 90s, we see this what I call the sexy sushi boom in America. Sure. You've spoken about this before. I, I, the sexy sushi movement, it's like early 90s. Think like Sunset Strip Los Angeles. Yeah. Guns and Roses is playing. You just hit big on the stock market and junk bonds. And you want to take your gal out on an, a night on the town. You go to the Roxy Theater. You see Slash all, you know, go drugged up out there. You go to Dorcia. Eat the uni. Yeah. <laughs> you like, you know, he, he like throws a chair through the window. Then you go to a... Uh, What's it called? A katana sushi or something? <gasps> yeah, I know, you know all about I mean? katana. <laughs> so sushi had this really big explosion. Um, and culturally in America, we had this both Japanophobia and Japanophilia happening. Yeah, I I, I understand the Japanophilia, not yeah, so yeah. much the Japanophobia. Well, so the phobia was simply like 
the Japanese people are too good at manufacturing electronics and cars. And cars. Okay, right? that makes sense. That makes and, sense. And like they must Not be- valid though. No, I mean, like, listen, <laughs> Japan had, like, a great economic rise post-World War sure. II. Um, and also, one of the reasons there weren't enough Japanese people in America to open sushi sushi bars for the demand is because wages were really high in Japan and not that many Why would people you wanted yeah. to go, right? Yeah. Uh, so you had a lot of Chinese and Korean immigrants in especially Los Angeles <laughs> opening sushi restaurants. Yeah, some of my um, favorite joints are owned by Korean people. I love it. I love getting a side <laughs> of kimchi with my like California roll with fried shrimp and spicy mayo on it. Yep, it's yep, like yep. truly one of my favorite things and oh, one yeah. of those things that makes LA what it is and, and how much I love it. Yeah. Um, so anyways, there was this kind of attitude that like the Japanese people must be doing something culturally that we don't understand and in came this sort of orientalism and fetishization mm-hmm. of all Japanese culture where it's like, well, they're oh. very respectful to their elders and they, you know, have the, the, the shokunin, like the artisanal master. And there's almost this like religiosity to it. Hmm. And we have put that into sushi where in America of we're like, things. sushi is sacred because I'm paying, if you go to an omakase restaurant, I'm paying $200 for it. And so, oh, every single thing this sushi chef does is intentional. It's right. From the yeah, way, and, and it's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. and there's wrong ways to eat sushi. No, you never dip it yeah, rice side yeah, down. Yeah, you never yeah, put yeah. the wasabi in this. Don't, don't rub do your this. chopsticks together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Uh, and so we have this sort of like vaunted idea of mm-hmm. what sushi should be. Mm-hmm. Um, and in actuality, in Japan, it is not treated as such. Like we see... We see Jiro dreams of sushi. Yeah, that's ex- that's what I was going to say right now. I'm like, they really do revere it highly, don't they? Because we've seen Jiro dreams of sushi. And uh, neither of us have ever been to a sushi bar in Japan. No, we should go. Right? Well, I would love to go. Okay. And this is all actually written about in a fantastic book by Sasha Isenberg called mm-hmm. The Sushi Economy. Uh, he says, all the religious connotations about sushi that Americans project are simply a form of Orientalism. And he goes in to talk about how mm. eating sushi in Japan, he's like, it's a big, boisterous atmosphere. Like, he likens sushi chefs more like a, a bartender or like a barber, where like you're shooting the crap with them. <laughs> you're shooting the crap, you know the old saying. Okay. Where in America, a lot of people are like, oh, this is a very special experience. It's serious, yeah. It's very serious and it's very almost solemn in a lot of ways. And so we start to think, of things like, oh, all the fish that they're using, these must be the most pristine product because mm-hmm. we don't eat fish raw in America. But if this Japanese person, who again is probably not Japanese, not that that matters whatsoever, sure. but it's we don't have the same thoughts necessarily about Chinese or Korean culture that we do with Japanese culture. And mm-hmm. when I say we, I mean a lot of white Americans. The collective right? white American, yeah. The collective white American. Yeah. Um, that is represented by this one white dude mm. sitting right here. Now, how does that now how does that feed into our sushi restaurant scamming you? That's a great question, Nicole, because somebody did a study. It was actually a group called uh, Oceana. They're an ocean preservation group. Are these the people that snuck the the whale meat? Oh, my God. Are they? I don't are think they? it's the same people. No, different people? I don't know. Okay. Uh, but anyways, they uh-huh. found, and this is actually the lowest figure that I've seen because there have been so many studies about fish mislabeling, mm-hmm. um, quote, that one in five seafood samples tested worldwide. Turds. Whoops. Excuse me. One in five seafood samples tested worldwide turns out to be a completely different uh, species than what the <gasps> menu packaging says. One out of five? And so Shut up. One out of five. And when I heard, first heard this, I was like, well, there's not a lot of scientific delineation about like what makes a certain fish a certain fish. Huh, okay. So th- the best example of this is um, Patagonian toothfish. You mean... Chilean sea bass, bass. baby. (laughs) And so again, this isn't sushi restaurant scamming you. Um, This is any restaurant that serves fish and an entire large fishing industry. It's yeah, I I feel like it's the industry. It's not not the it's not the guy behind the counter. Yeah. So if if there's a garbage fish that is ugly and has an ugly name that you want to sell, um, you just name it very similarly to another fish. So you have. Uh, Mediterranean sea bass, right? Mm -hmm. Or what? Just sea bass. Just sea bass, right? Or Branzino, right? Is Branzino sea bass? Branzino sea bass. And it's a Mediterranean sea bass. And so you have that. And so then, you know, fishermen in in Chile are like, yo, uh, we got this big fish that gives a lot of meat, easy to fish, called Patagonian toothfish. Big, ugly looking mother effer, right? Nobody wants to buy it, though, because it's called Pat. Nobody knows what Patagonia is. Americans are ignorant. Everybody knows what Patagonia is, the sweaters. Do, do you know what Patagonia actually is? Yeah, I do. What is that? What's Patagonia? It's in Peru. Dang it. No, it's not. Uh, it's like southern Argentina, right? What? I mean, Chile, Chile is also certainly represented in Patagonia. But Patagonia is a large region. Um, Does it include near the south Peru? Of, of South Does it America. include Peru? Peru is certainly not. 
I need to know if it includes Peru. No, Peru is definitely more north than Patagonia, I right? I need to know before you make me look dumb on this podcast. Patagonia, Peru part of it. Oh, man, there's no, no Peru. Just Why did Argentina. I think it was Peru? But the point is, <laughs> there's this fish and nobody wanted to buy it, and so they That's renamed shady. it something. And so Patagonian toothfish is not a bass, has nothing to do with sea bass, but it's labeled a bass. But there's no actual protection on what is a bass and what is not. And, and a lot of these have, things... Uh-huh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, please. A lot of these things don't necessarily cross cultures, too. So in Japan, mm-hmm. there's certain things that, like... They have their own names for fish. Obviously, in Japan, they don't use the English names for fish. Yeah. So they may not have the same delineation, such as this is a bass and this is a bass. They're like, we got our own Japanese names for this because we're uh, in Japan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. And so with all of the fish mislabeling, one, you're likely paying more money for uh, a worse fish, right? They tend to not, not to mislabel. What does worse uh, fish mean? Well, that's a great point. A fish that at market price mm-hmm. would not be at the price you paid for it. Okay. I agree with you, though, that I've eaten a lot of fish uh, around the world. Most of it tastes really freaking similar. I, I mean, I will a never pay thirty dollars for a halibut. That's insane. Like a, a halibut's not cooked? that good, cooked or or raw. Do you eat halibut? Yeah, you can eat halibut raw. I've had halibut raw before. Do, is it worth the, the markup no. over any other fish? No. No. But what I'm saying is, like, there's there has to be a difference between, like, a firm white fish and, like, a... There, there's, differences, there's differences, but not in... You don't see this any other way and, and any other place in the meat industry, right? I guess you do, and you can, you can you talk mean? about... I was going to say, there's not, like, a competing animal to a cow <laughs> that you can sort sure. of, like, pass, you know, beef off as. Yeah, fair. You can, you can mislabel. Here's another point. Go ahead. God dang it. USD, okay. USDA, right? I was just about to bring up the whole USDA prime choice, whatever. Is that, that Correct. There's none of that for fish, is there? There's none of that for fish. There should be. And so, so the USDA, the um, this is a great thing that I only found out from watching the Netflix documentary Poisoned as Nicole puts on lip gloss. I do not want Poisoned? to see that. You should watch Poisoned. It's really no, interesting. Is it's, it like Food Inc.? It's all about food safety. Yeah, it's kind of like Food Inc. No, um, I want it's it. all about food safety in the E. coli outbreaks, the Jack in the Box, which I remember in the <laughs> 90s. Okay. Um, but the most interesting thing I found out, they're interviewing two people from the FDA and USDA. And then they go to the USDA person and they say, What do you regulate in America? And they go, we regulate all beef, poultry, and catfish. And then the FDA is like, we catfish. do everything else. And I was like, hold up, hold up. Why catfish? Then I learned why. <gasps> so the U.S. catfishing industry, which is a lot in like Arkansas, Mississippi Delta, that area, yeah. right? Catfish is a fresh river fish. Not kosher. Um, not kosher, but mm-hmm. delicious. <laughs> uh, big in the South, big also in Vietnamese food. <laughs> sure. Uh, it's a lovely dish called ban can. That is a delicious catfish soup. Sometimes they call it Vietnamese gumbo. Anywho, mm-hmm. there's now a huge uh, infiltration of Vietnamese farmed catfish coming to the American market, and oh. American suppliers don't like that. So they thought that the one thing they can beat this imported fish from Vietnam from is mm-hmm. is like standard safety and regulation. Wow, is it and because so many it's because so many Americans' livelihoods are based off of catfishing. Exactly, it, it's yeah. very much just like a, a protectionist sort sure. of policy, sure. right? Which America has been doing for a lot of years. And again, I have like nothing against fish being imported from wherever. I tend to eat a lot, but one of the main culprits in the fish labeling scandal is farmed catfish coming from Asia because it's packaged somewhere that's not in America. Okay, uh, and then they found out that catfish uh, farmed in Asia was mislabeled with 18 different fish species. Shut up. They're just up. passing catfish off as anything. Do you think it's like different parts of the catfish? It's uh, like, probably, it's like, yeah. It's like the tail is more tender, so let's say that this is a, I don't this know. This is Escalar. This is oh whatever. Oh my God, Orange Ruffy. Orange Ruffy, That's you know? That's really crazy. Um, sure. 18? 18. That was the biggest find from this study. I couldn't name 18 fish <laughs> if you paid me. <laughs> and so a lot of the fish mislabeling stuff you know, uh, me as somebody who I have no dietary restrictions, yeah. I have no allergies, no religious exemptions from anything, uh-huh. right? Um, I don't care very much because I just love going to sushi restaurants in any fish restaurant and just yeah, shoving fish in my sushi. gullet. Yeah, yeah, I ball right? out at sushi places too. So for me, it's, I'll eat know, whatever. Yeah. it's whatever. But um, if you are, say, pregnant, there are fish that pregnant women are not supposed to eat because of high mercury content. Oh, yeah, which ones are those? I don't know. What you? No, I can't. Like if... 
I'm I just not pregnant, saying, Josh. Just, you didn't. You haven't been drinking. I. Uh, <laughs> Everybody uh, at work wants me to be pregnant so bad, but I'm not. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry to let you guys down. Not yet. Not yet. So that's one of the things. Fish, and then you get you well, can't eat catfish, Nicole. Well, well, You're Jewish. Well, You're not going to get into <laughs> Jewish heaven if you accidentally eat catfish. Those well, mislabeled. I have a friend who's who's OBGYN. She's pregnant right now. Said, "Yeah, go ahead, eat raw fish, just as long as it's from a good place." I agree with that. Can can I explain why I should be able to have opinions about your pregnancy? Mine in uh, particular? Health? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just mine, though. Correct. No one no, else. No, everybody. I think I should be sort of the main advice giver for anyone who's pregnant. Uh, just just imagine, and, and, imagine me. Imagine me. I tell you I'm pregnant. Now, what are you going to tell me? So the whole thing about pregnancy, right? Do I know what it is or how it happens? Not pregnancy? even a little bit. I'm yeah. going to give you a hint. Come here. Yeah. You have to put that in where? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is okay. The reason you're not supposed to eat things when you're pregnant, it's basically just all the things that you're also not supposed to eat when you're not pregnant. If you want to um, minimize risk, if you well, want to minimize risk of you food can safety eat infections. Capicola. No, but deli meats have a like high percentage of listeria cases, right? Yeah, Th- but that's that's like what this is all about. It's just like, hey, don't put and yourself like raw cheeses and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're at risk for it for any other infection. sort of infection, yeah, and you yeah. got a little thing growing inside your tummy. The tummy is the anatomical region where the baby, the seed grows, hangs out. <laughs> um, but no, that's what it is, and so it's all about trying to minimize risk of food infection. Well, is there a high well, with, with raw fish, is there a high infection rate? I'm so glad you asked, Nicole, because, <laughs> this is fun. because the main thing, so this is now we're getting into sushi grade and sashimi grade. Which um, is a lie. Which is an absolute lie, right? There, yeah. FDA has released guidelines on fish when it is safe to be consumed raw. And this is not freshwater fish because freshwater fish have a high degree of bacteria and or not, not bacteria, uh, parasites are the main issue. So, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Is there a lot of instances where wild and farm-raised salmon are kind of like mislabeled? Does that happen often? Oh, that happens almost all the That's time. Really annoying. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I don't even know what's better for the environment or myself anymore. I don't care. I was told that farm is bad because they dye the fish, and then the dye makes the kids go crazy. L- listen, life is really complicated. I have no idea. I just eat the fish. <laughs> like I go to a fish and I eat the fish. I go, hey, can I consume you? It goes, blah, 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 and I eat it. Um, but <laughs> I'm happy you asked permission <laughs> of the fish. Yeah, animal sovereignty, I believe in it. So uh, parasites are the biggest risk when it comes to eating raw fish. Mm-hmm. That's what people always get worried about, right? You, sure. They're bad raw fish. You're going to get parasites. Uh, and the Anisakis worm, which that just sounds like a, the Greek hammer thrower. Okay. Mikhail Anisakis. Okay. <laughs> um, but the Anisakis worm is the biggest risk okay. for that. Um, America, we eat such little raw fish, especially in our homes, Mm -hmm. that there were hardly any documented cases of this. There were 13 cases in the last 24 years on sox worms. And part of that is when we talk about sushi grade and sashimi grade, the FDA released guidelines that are like, uh, there might be parasites in everything. Just like, just freeze it. Just freeze it. It'll kill all the parasites and, and that's it. And so almost like all fish is now just deep frozen as a means of like, okay, FDA, you want to put out a blanket statement? We're going to freeze everything. You know what's so funny? I actually saw a TikTok about people eating a frozen Costco sushi. Yes. Did you see this too? Yes. And then everyone's like, that's not sushi great. There is a warrior out there among us on TikTok. I can't remember their handle. Meg, if you want to find him, who is literally just taking Costco salmon and going, here's how I make my Costco salmon sashimi. Yeah. Um, and it's perfectly safe. It's an uproar. People, people were so upset. And so when you're talking about like, you know, uh, as long as the fish is from a good quality place, there's no such thing. Means. And again, 13 cases of Anisakis worm. There are, I'm sure, other risks out there to eating raw fish. Um, oh, we found it. Okay, this is... Photogami. Yeah. Photogami. Thank you. Thirty dollar for- Costco salmon. Shout out to Photogami out Thank there. Thank you, Photogami. Um, but yeah, so your your risk of getting any bo- sort of foodborne illness or parasite from raw fish is so so much less than like eating lettuce. Nicole, okay, huh. pregnant people, <laughs> pregnant people out there, stop eating bagged lettuce. Bagged lettuce. It, look this up. This it, it is literally like one of the least safe foods to consume. In America, there are always listeria outbreaks. There's Even salmonella the outbreaks. Wash? There's E. coli. Washing it does nothing. This is another point. 
Washing it does nothing. How do, what do you think bacteria just doesn't survive in water? Bacteria loves wet ingredients. It doesn't just like ride away on a wave. No, the only way to kill bacteria is through temperature change. Right? And so so heat and Are cold. Are you telling people? Which would destroy the lettuce. So yeah. that's one of the reasons E. coli is now more common in lettuce than it is in beef. So you're telling people to freeze their lettuce or to cook their lettuce? Both. I just oh asked you earlier if I can braise red. Uh, oh, I thought you were just saying that for kicks and giggles. No, I, learned, I have like spinach at home that I was going to saute, but spinach wilts down to nothing. And I was like, I can cut it with other greens. The only other green I have is red leaf lettuce. Um, and I don't know. I might do that. And okay. it'll kill bacteria. But <laughs> okay. another point. When it comes to raw fish. Yeah. Ceviche. People okay. are like, the lemon cooks the fish. It does. It does nothing. Are you kidding the me? The main concern with eating Are raw fish, the, the acid, main concern, acid, acid, acid preserve, it can preserve okay, it. Okay, wait, acid, wait, 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 it wait. It can preserve it. So, so, go ahead. Me? Me? <laughs> so, whenever you have acid, yeah. and, okay, so this is going to be a go make a really dark turn, mm -hmm. but you know how people, like, they pour acid on people? Like, Jesus when they Christ. Do Are you talking about, like, acid, like, acid attacks against yeah. women? And, yeah, oh. yeah. So, like, it, like. Stop, stop doing that. <laughs> like. <laughs> don't eat capicola when you're pregnant and don't kill people with acid attacks. I think you should eat capicola when you're pregnant, though. But don't <laughs> do the second one. Go ahead. You were talking about acid. It's like, doesn't that like, did you, it like cooks the skin, But right? acid is like, those. that is like acid like meant to harm people. Like lemon There's juice is acid. Degrees. Ceviche is okay, lemon, okay, is lime okay, juice. Okay, okay, so, so, okay. Ceviche, Where are you going okay, with this? Wait, so, so. You're saying like acid bad for life. No, no, no. Listen okay. to me. So it's like saying a match and like a forest fire is uh, to lemon juice as is acid. To battery acid. Yeah. Yeah. Don't make battery acid ceviche. And uh, <laughs> don't, don't, you know, light a cigarette with a forest fire. Correct. Mundo. Yeah, you're right. Everything <laughs> Although I did do that sometimes with a, with just a home fire? gas burner. Oh. Just it's in your mouth. You just go. Yeah. That's how you burner. send your, your eyelashes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there, done that. College, man. <laughs> um, but no. So if the main concern behind Eating raw fish is parasites, okay. which it seems to be. Uh -huh. uh, the Anisakis worm, and that's the main parasite that you find in fish, uh, it thrives <laughs> in acidic environments. So oh. it would do nothing. But again, 13 cases in 24 years in America. So wait a second. What the acid does is you can eat it over a long period of time. So say you want to enjoy your fish three days from now without it getting the normal amount of bacteria that would build up on any sort of fresh, wet product. Acid will help preserve it. So the so you're trying to tell me that the malic acid or the citric, citric acid, sorry, the citric <laughs> acid in a lime or lemon does not cook the fish in ceviche. Uh, it's an it's an etymological and semantic debate, right, on what the term "cook" means. You know, acid it'll it'll structure the proteins in a way uh -huh. that is similar to it being heat treated. However, okay. when it comes to bacteria, mm -hmm. it does or, or not even bacteria. When it comes to things like parasites, parasites that will get killed by cooking, it will not kill it. It will not kill it um, in terms of, unless, of curing with acid. Unless you freeze the fish beforehand. Freezing the fish to negative thirty one degrees, which okay. a home freezer cannot do is what the FDA recommends to avoid parasites. Then how are, supposed to, how are people supposed to enjoy sushi and ceviche at home? Enjoy it. Do it. 13 cases in 24 years. I know sometimes I can be... Listen, listen to me. Just please, please listen. I'm pregnant people. Um, just everybody, but everybody also listen. I don't have to listen because I'm not pregnant. <laughs> I know people have gotten mad at me about being cavalier on certain food safety issues, such as cooking a chicken breast to 155 degrees instead oh, of 165. Oh my God. But get me out please, of here. Please, please get me out look here. at the science... And the numbers. Bag lettuce is out here murking people. 27 people died from cantaloupes. Uh, lunch meat, love, hot dogs. I love cantaloupe. Yeah, oh man, the cantaloupe disaster in like, what was that, 2014 or something like that? It's utterly insane. Um, there's so many things that are outside of your control in food safety. The things that you can control, like don't wash your chicken to spread salmonella around, you know, your kitchen. Like wash your hands often. Um, but when it comes to fish... 13 cases in 24 years. Ch nice. Chicken. Undercooking your chicken by 10 degrees, all it has to do is stay at that temperature for 17 seconds to kill all the salmonella. These are things that are documented by science. I you cook a chicken question. breast to 155, Nicole, 17 seconds. Okay, I have one question. Why sometimes, once, why sometimes when I eat sushi, my tummy hurt? I don't what? know. How much sushi are you eating? Uh, honestly, me? <laughs> once a week. Is that too much? I don't know. Your stomach also hurts when you eat Zanku chicken. Your stomach also hurts when you eat cheese, dude. Your stomach hurts all the time. That's another point. Sometimes we eat like certain things and we attribute us feeling crappy to that. Aww. It might be stress. Aww. You know what I mean? I guess hot girls really do have IBS. I get bad farts when I eat a steak, but that's because uh, methane buildup. And bananas. So, 
<laughs> in conclusion, there are scams abound to be seen within sushi restaurants, That's right? That's right. Fish is always mislabeled. Sushi and sashimi grade are not real things. Um, again, I don't consider this scamming people, but a majority of sushi restaurants in America are not owned by anybody Japanese. Um, and none of that matters whatsoever. It really doesn't matter. None of that matters. Enjoy your life. Eat the raw fish. Have a spoonful of spicy tuna. Have a sake. Live your life. Spicy tuna tends to be the meat that's stuck to the stu- tuna spine, and they just take a knife and they scrape it that's out to get more out there. And favorite. it is great, and it's a delight. Food is not a thing that should be feared. Food is a thing that should be enjoyed. Okay, I got another one. Spicy tuna <laughs> is to sushi as bulgogi is to Korean barbecue. Yeah, now we're getting analogies. <laughs> Cook up your next fire meal with the Mythical Kitchen Utensil Set. Oh yeah, we got three pieces for you. Not two, not four, but three. We got a spatula, a spoon, and guess what? Another spoon, but this one has slots. (laughs) They're made with silicone and feature smooth wooden handles with fun engravings. The funnest engravings. Get yours now at mythical.com. All right, Nicole. Hi. (laughs) We've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. Well, it's time for a segment we call Opinions Opinions Are Are Like Casseroles. All right, y'all, before we get to your opinions, we want to check in on the poll we posted on our Spotify page. It's poll dance time, Nicole. Ready? If you feel so inclined, you can do your best poll dance while we review the poll. We asked y'all, do you, what, what is she? I'm starting. Okay, well, anyways, uh, we asked you, do you think aliens are real? And 74.4% of you said, hell yeah. And then 256 said, I'm with Josh on this one. I don't I don't think, like, they're, they probably exist, but they're not, like, what we consider aliens. Also, like, unidentified flying, it's such a vague term. I'm uh, unidentified, <laughs> and I'm a flying object. I'm an unidentified voguing object. Oh, <laughs> Uh, my pinky! Guys, we've had now zero days since the last voguing accident in the Mythical Kitchen. Can we change the sign, please? Change the sign. Thank you so pinky. much. Thank you so much. Nicole needs medical attention. All right, Maggie, play that first opinion. Crash single are disgusting. <gasps> come at me, bro. Oh, I will come at you. Uh, but to watch us come at her, you got to go over to our audio only versions on Spotify, Apple That's Podcasts, right. wherever the heck you get your podcasts. Uh, so for now, this is us signing off for the video, folks. We'll see you all later. Thanks for stopping by. We got new episodes out. Audio only comes out on Wednesdays. Video drops on Sundays. Check us out. That's right. And if you want to leave an opinion, call 833-DOGPOD1. Our number again is 833-DOGPOD1. Hey, come back to the old Mythical Kitchen YouTube channel. Watch all come our on. stuff. We do fun things. Last Meals with Post come Malone. We do a little fancy fast food with Stevie. Yeah. We're proud of the work we do. Come on. <laughs> See you all next time. Nicole Beckon Harder. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What's up? Come on. Oh, no. Come on. Come on.